Sometimes as a PC gamer, you don't really feel like sitting at your fancy gaming setup. That couch of yours is probably calling your name. So you know what? That means you have to buy a console, right? No. You're a member of the PC community, so we're gonna show you how to build your own console that's gonna be awesome, and you're gonna freaking love how easy it is to build. Okay, let's do that after a word from today's sponsor. Listen, I get that we might be a little biased about the whole PC versus console debate, considering we are a PC building channel and all, but it's just so hard to defend consoles when you can build a great gaming PC at a reasonable budget due to platforms like Jawa.gg. Jawa is an online community-driven marketplace for buying and selling everything PC gaming related. You're able to purchase components, peripherals, accessories, and even full-on custom-built gaming PCs at some incredible prices. The best part about these competitively priced custom gaming PCs is the fact that they're also well-built and aesthetically pleasing. One one of my favorite deals from today is this RTX 2060 and Ryzen 3600 gaming PC for just $620. And with the GPU market the way it is, finding cars at reasonable prices can be a challenge. Jawa, however, is full of crazy deals like this RX 6600 XT for just $188. Do some deal hunting yourself, be sure to check out Jawa.g today. And if you end up shopping around, use code TOASTY10 to save 10% off your order up to $10. Big thanks again to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. Now, the goal of this custom PC is very simple. The idea is to make a very small form factor build that can be used with only only a game controller, because if you're gaming from a couch, you're gonna wanna primarily use a controller, but we'll touch on that later, how there's other options as well. And the other idea is I also wanted to make it compact and sleek enough to where it will fit in a living room setup without standing out too much. I know you all have some significant others at home that wouldn't like a gaming PC in the living room. Now, one of the things that makes this unique from any other mini PC is that we're gonna be loading a version of Linux called Bazite onto it, which is a really light to run Linux version that looks a lot like Steam Deck. So it's very user-friendly when it comes to the gaming audience. And the best part is if you're scared of Linux, you can put Windows on this as well. Now, that's a little bit different than a normal video we have done before because this PC is actually already built, but we're gonna talk a little bit about the specs and how we made it possible for only $600. And of course, we had to get a little bit of help from our friends at AliExpress. So to go over the specs of this build, first we have the Ryzen 5 3600 for $50 from AliExpress. This is an awesome six core 12 thread CPU that even has Gen 4 support. And obviously when you're buying from AliExpress, you're gonna be getting a trade CPU. So we have the Thermalrite AXP90 white low profile cooler coming in at 20 bucks for the AM4 platform. And for the motherboard, we also an AliExpress with the Jinwei ITX AMD AM4 B450. So this is just basically an I B450i coming in at 70 bucks, which is honestly a pretty good deal for an ITX motherboard. And next up, we went all reliable with the Team Group MP33 one terabyte Gen 3 SSD at 47 bucks. And really you don't need anything faster for just loading Steam games. And then for RAM, we decided to really load the system up. We have Corsair Vengeance LPX 32 gigs DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. And we paid only 47 bucks for that, which for 32 gigs is pretty crazy. Now the focus of this build is to try to go all new parts. So with the graphics card, we went new here with the RX 6600, eight gig, all white coming from ASRock. We paid $209 for it. Solid option for this build because it consumes very little power and works really well with the 3600, but it will be limited by our case, which we'll talk about more here in just a second. Now the downside with small four factor builds is the cost of power supplies is quite expensive. So we went pretty budget here and you at home don't have to do that. If you guys worry about having super high quality power supplies, we wanted to experiment here today to see how well this would work. But we got an Apivia 500 watt SFX power Power supply. If you guys at home want to buy an FSP model for 450 watts for a little bit more money, you can do that, but this power supply only costs a grand total of $36, which again, you might be a little weary about, but we will be doing some testing in today's video to show you guys. If we'd like it for a small form factor build, we don't have to pay that SFX premium. And speaking of the case that makes this build possible, this is the S300 in white. It does come with a PCIe riser cable because the GPU is vertically mounted. It is a PCIe Gen 3 riser cable, which again, our graphics card is Gen 4, so we might get a little bit of a performance loss by doing so, but based on the size and form factor, I'm not too worried about that. And coming in at $99, it's a really compact and sleek build that you can also put together in white as well if you want to. But since we had a white motherboard, white GPU, and a bunch of other stuff, we figured we'd go all white here. And all in all, around $600. And also, you don't even need to count the cost of installing Bazite because it's a free Linux distro. We got some good price performance here, but what we're gonna go ahead and do, guys, instead of just our normal benchmark setup, we built this PC and it's ready to go, we're gonna show you quickly how to install Bazite if it's your first time and then show you our favorite fake living room setup. All right, guys, it's time to show you guys quickly how to install Bazite. First up, go to bazite.gg. You want to go ahead and go to download Bazite. Uh, we'll scroll the way down here. Now, there are different versions depending on the hardware you're going with for Bazite on how you want to install it. For us, we are going to go with the home theater PC setup because that is kind of the vibe we're going for. Uh, we will be picking the primary vendor of our GPU, which, again, it does work with Intel GPUs, but it does seem to work better with AMD hardware, RX 400 series or greater. So we're going to go ahead and pick that as our GPU. CPU, and then we're going to check the desktop environment KDE like SteamOS. So you have a very similar experience to SteamOS. Click that. 
And from there, you're going to download Bazite Deck. Click download. And just like that, Bazite Deck is downloading. It's a bit of a big file size, about nine gigs. So we're gonna let that download there. And while we're doing that, we're going to need Belina Etcher, which Belina Etcher is a way for you to make bootable USBs to install many different ISOs. So you can use this program for a bunch of different operating systems. If you're doing a lot of Linux installs and, or maybe you're just trying to experiment with Linux, Belina Etcher is a good resource to have. So we're gonna go ahead and download Belina Etcher on this PC. And while that's downloading, this would probably be a good time to mention that you will need a flash drive, obviously. Um, I have this bad of like micro center drives here uh these little micro center uh flash drives here 32 gig drives you can actually buy these on amazon i think it's like a, a 10 pack for like 16 dollars if you're gonna make a lot of Linux distros, just buy something like this. These are solid flash drives, but make sure you get a new one, uh, just for, or format whatever one you have. Um, I normally recommend just getting a new one so you can just keep a Bazite install sitting around whenever you wanna install Bazite on a new PC. So might as well buy some of them and I'll leave links down below to everything I'm mentioning right now during the tutorial. And all I gotta do is open up Blean Etcher. It's just an EXE, so once you open it up, you're good to go here. Uh, we're gonna wait for this download to finish. I'm not gonna show you the entire install process because it does take a little bit once you get the file to flash to the drive and I already have a Bazite USB ready to go and I don't wanna do that to another flash drive. So uh, we're gonna wait for this ISO to go and I'll show you guys where you hit the flash button and then from there, you'll be ready to uh, install this on your PC. All right, guys, now that we have our ISO downloaded, we're going to use Bolina Etcher. I'll go ahead and minimize this right here to make it easier for you all to see. We're going to choose from file, which will go ahead and go to our downloads folder. We have Bazite right here. We're going to select a target. This right here is your flash drive. Make sure you don't use your main primary drive. Uh, it does block it out on purpose because it detects it as a system drive, but just make sure you don't do it. This is a USB flash drive. Hit select. And then all you have to do is hit flash and boom, your flash drive will start an install process, getting everything ready to boot. And then just like a normal Windows install, you're gonna plug this flash drive into the PC once you finish building it and go through this checklist option. You'll see on screen here, it's a pretty straightforward option. You're gonna create a username, you can create a password if you want to, set your time zone to hit install. And then from there, all you have to do is sign into your Steam account. As you see right here, it'll ask you to sign into your Steam account through the check process. And then you're off to the races. It's very simple. It's just like setting up a Steam Deck for the very first time. And and then we'll be able to show you guys what the performance is like once we dive into the testing on our living room setup. All right, so we're now in Bazite, which Matt got loaded up on here. And uh, you said that it was pretty easy this time um, now that you did it. And I'm sure you'll put a link down below on how to, how to do it a little bit quicker. But I got to say, the interface is cool. It is kind of like Steam Big Picture, uh, kind of like a console vibe. And one thing I like is I, I actually, before we started, I started click clicking buttons. And like, there's not a way to mess this up. The only thing you do is if you press back, you get an extra menu. If you press the home button, you get the menu. And yeah, I like that there's not like a great way to break this because that's one of the things that's scary about Linux is like, I don't want to have to sit here and type in pseudo commands and stuff in order to feel like I'm just wanting to play a game. Now it is important to mention with the setup we're running right here, we're actually using a very budget 4K TV because you know how cheap TVs are nowadays. Yeah. You can get a 4K TV for nothing. Getting a 1080p TV doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but obviously this is an RX 6600. So you're not gonna be gaming at 4K on most of the games you're gonna play, which if you go to our library, uh, you should be able to tell all the games that we have installed. We have some easier to run games. So we have like Cuphead, we have Gunfire Reborn, those mm. kind of games, Theoretically, you might be able to get 60 FPS and 4K on those. That should be fine. Um, as you can see here in Bazite, there's a lot of cool things about it where it goes to your Steam library and shows you games that run great on deck, which is Steam huh. Deck. Um, all the other games will work for the most part, but some of them have to use the compatibility layer within Linux to be able to run. And also with Bazite, there's nothing really stopping you at home from making a higher end version of this if you wanted to. You most certainly could do that um, and have a really high end PC. We decided to focus on the budget side of things because if someone has a really high end PC already, you might just want to stick with that. So if you use Circle Plus A with uh, Bazite, you get access to the performance settings, uh, which allow you to do like things like performance overlay. You can do uh, FPS limit as you see right here it is at a 60 fps limit but you can disable that by hitting disable frame rate limit below that <laughs> um, below there you can manually overclock your gpu you can update whatever that performance overlay looks like so you can see some different things on screen oh, there you some upscaling too you can do built some in. upscaling built in upscaling across any game so it has <laughs> fsr across the board so any game you want to it's kind of like having lossless scaling built in so yeah with the quick settings it looks like you can adjust the volume as well and um, yeah, this is a game that we should be running at 4K right now. Yeah, right now we're at a lock 60 4K. This is, this is so weird playing this on, uh, all right, let's, let's see. But yeah, the thing is too, obviously, lock 60. 
Um, but we were talking about at the beginning of this video, the whole idea of having just a controller. You most certainly could get like one of those couch masters with a like mouse and keyboard that you keep mm -hmm. to the side and do that as well. Again, that is a bit of an investment, but um, you do, can have the PC gaming experience from a couch as well if you want to. It's pretty easy with wireless technology. It's definitely like, you're pretty much un unlimited on what you can do on this. Everything you can do on a console, you can do way more with this. Yeah. This feels almost a like higher fresh rate to me. Yeah, Funny when enough. it's locked to 60, we're actually pulling like no power. Like, so the GPU is pulling about 15 watts and the CPU is pulling 30. So we're like, not even probably 100 watts total. Barely. So very power efficient as well, especially with these kind of games. Indie games is going to be no problem running them at 4K. We'll run some more demanding games later at 1080p with some upscaling and stuff to show you guys what it can do. Um, but yeah, it depends on what TV you have. This is honestly pretty cool. I uh, This is something that if I was going to game on a TV, I just refuse to buy a console. So I think this would be the way that I would do it. But yeah, I think um, I kind of want to see what a, another game will look like on this. So let's go ahead and give it a go. Uh, so we're going to launch another game, Sekiro, which is a more demanding game, but also I've tried it on my handheld. It runs pretty smooth. We'll see what it does at 4K. I imagine it's going to be kind of hard, but we'll see. Um, if we get 60 FPS, I'll just leave it at that. Um, but I did set it to where we can run games at low resolution pretty easily through the Bazai menu. So that's pretty cool as well. And one thing too, in terms of the ease of use, we mentioned at the beginning of this video, super easy to set up. When it comes to installing stuff with AMD hardware, which I will say Bazite really likes AMD GPUs, you get NVIDIA GPUs to work, but it's mainly AMD ones, you don't need to install any drivers whatsoever. You just get it up and running, you update the Bazite install as you needed, and um, everything just works. So uh, this is the first time setup that does happen though, one of the downsides where games that are not natively supported have to do Vulcan shaders in the background. Um, so it will take a little bit to run this, but once we do, then it won't have to do it again. It actually defaulted to 1080p uh, for this one, which makes sense. We're running a high preset and this one has a 60 FPS cap baked in. So, you know, really doesn't matter all that much. Um, but yeah, we're getting that lock 60 right now. It's a nice looking game. And um, this is a good example of a tough game that uh, you can definitely play with a controller that honestly, if you're gonna sit at a PC anyways, you probably would be using a controller anyways. Oh God. Oh, oh, oh no, he's better than me. Oh, oh. No. oh yeah. My goodness. Oh my <laughs> <Dude>. God. <laughs> oh. Uh, shadows die twice. Oh. <laughs> this guy doesn't even see me. <laughs> yeah, you're done. Yeah, this is just another example of a game. Again, you would play with controller and it runs really smooth. We have a couple other ones as well we'll show you guys. And uh, again, super easy just to be like, you know what? I just want to go home and try something different. Let me, let me just, I can go just straight to your library if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Go through here and be like, yeah, I'm gonna close this one out. Well, Steam is pretty good about, um, you can't run two Steam games at once. So I think in theory, if you launch another game, it should just close it out. Yeah, it definitely should. All right, we're playing some Forza Horizon. And uh, this is a game where, you know, obviously having a wheel and pedal setup would be like way more ideal than this. Um, but we kind of try, we have a Logitech G923, G923, which is like one of the most basic uh, setups and sadly it doesn't seem like it has native support and there is like some github files that you can download in order to Potentially make it work, but that is really the biggest trade-off with Linux that we always come back to um, That you know is, is just compatibility a lot of things games uh, Devices and honestly other random things may not always work with Linux so That's the one trade-off and that's why we said in the beginning of this video This is cool because if you're not willing to deal with those trade-offs right now You can just do Windows if you want. Yep, and uh, with Baz I will show you guys after this as you can see We're getting a good 60 FPS on high settings 1080p on this display. No problem running this game at 60 FPS uh, we will show you how there is a desktop mode in Bazai, which is a way for you to do some of the behind the scenes Linux stuff that you may have to do. What is happening here? Uh, that you may end up having to do uh, to ensure that you get certain things working that may just not natively work on Linux. But if you just want to sit down, launch a bunch of games and use a controller, 90% of use cases are gonna work just fine. Did you have to feel, I swear it's so delayed when you turn. It makes it like so difficult to drive. Oh, that is interesting. And it's hard to tell if it's actually delayed or if they design it like that. That is weird. Were we playing this game at 1.2 and had a similar situation? We were doing mm -hmm. something, I don't remember. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, Forza runs good. Yeah, we'll use this as a point to uh, go ahead and 
Oh, did I finish what I was doing? I mean, that's perfect timing right there. Uh, let's go back home and I'll show you guys real quick. Let's see. You can switch to desktop mode and this will look like your traditional desktop. You can set everything up. It's a lot like switching in and out of, uh, which not a lot of people even know it exists, I think, but Steam Big Picture. Yep. So yeah, as you can see, you got your standard Linux desktop here. Uh, you have a file explorer. Uh, you have all the things that you normally would have on a desktop and this is why you can set things up as well or install programs. You can do video editing with programs to support it. Like again, if this is just your primary computer, you can run Linux this way. You normally don't have to touch the side of things unless you have, again, a situation like we mentioned where the use case of the wheel needs some modification behind the scenes and then you can find some guides to help you with that. But hey, this does exist as well for those who wanna fine tune things and then all you have to do is return to gaming mode up here and it'll switch back to the gaming mode. Our last game we'll launch is some good old Spider-Man after an update. We connected this thing to the internet, which by the way, um, same issue here. If you get a motherboard mini ITX port, try to get one with built-in Wi-Fi. It'll probably work a lot better within Bazi natively. Uh, we're using an external Wi-Fi dongle, which seems to not pick up in Bazi. You might have to install specific drivers for it. Uh, but we are running Ethernet now, and all these games that have been sitting, well, installed for a couple days are like, I have an update, I have an update. <laughs> so I uh, got the update going. We're launching Spider-Man 2 and see how this runs. This will be a pretty demanding game at 1080p with the 6600. Once again, we're kind of targeting the 60 FPS mark. It really doesn't make a lot of sense to go over it unless you have a high refresh rate display. I am noticing one thing, and we noticed that in Forza. Um, I don't really have the remote right now to mess with it in any more detail, but this TV is currently not on like a game mode, so the input lag is definitely a bit higher. Modern TVs do have like a game mode that will reduce input lag normally and make it much more playable. And normally it'll auto detect with consoles whenever you are using a console, but as you can see here, we're running this PC, so it normally doesn't opt to that. But um, yeah, this game runs good, 60 FPS, not too bad, a few dips here and there. Um, again, is this gonna look identical to a PS5 Pro on a uh, TV like this? No, the PS5 Pro will definitely run better, uh, but it is the other alternative for those who just say, you know what, I am absolutely anti-console. I just wanna get a PC that's similar to a console. Hey, you can do something like this pretty easily. It's like every time I'm putting out fires against these guys. They're such arsonists. They are. Oh! Get them. The audio is doing some weird things right now, actually. It's probably frame gen. But um, yeah, I mean, even with frame gen on low, we're getting 100 FPS. If you did happen to have like a 120 Hertz TV, which is very possible, uh, you would get some pretty good uh, results here. So, hey, I stopped the fire, Woohoo! We're slowly beating the game. We're slowly beating the game. But hey guys, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna wrap this video up, talk a little bit more about uh, other ways you could build one of these at home yourself. But hey, this is a fun little experiment to show you guys the other side of PC gaming to further expand on your gaming experiences. And uh, it was a fun time putting together. Let's go ahead and wrap this video up real quick. All right guys, we just had a fun gaming session on the couch using the Bazite mini PC we have here. And I gotta say, it was a pretty awesome experience and every time Linux adds more games to the library, I get super excited. It's fun to have an operating system that doesn't cost anything and you can load it up on a system like this to get a console-like experience with a gaming PC you can build yourself. So if you're a member of the PC gaming community and you don't wanna buy a console and you wanna build one yourself, use those links in the description down below. They will be affiliate links, they will help us out to build this exact PC right here. And you can go a wide range of different directions with this thing. I will just warn you though, with this specific case, don't go super high end because the airflow isn't amazing. It does not come with any fans baked in already. You can add some very small fans to the bottom for additional airflow, but honestly, I wouldn't go super high end with it. But all in all, it's a really awesome case. You can build a really awesome mini. I, 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 I. <laughs> <laughs> And overall, this is a really awesome case and a good console killer option. I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think of Bazite and the idea of building your own console in the comments down below? So guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. So this PC will be for sale at PCBros.tech if you're looking for something to travel with and it'll likely have Windows on it, so don't worry, you don't have to learn Linux. PCBros.tech, you can buy a gaming PC if you don't feel like building one yourself and use code TOSTYBROS on checkout, you'll save some money, 3% to be exact, on your next purchase. See you guys later, goodbye.